You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, the keys to a natural looking facelift, the modern facelift. With us, uh, he is known for his natural looking results, Dr. Grant Fairbanks. Dr. Fairbanks, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate the invitation. Now, I have been trying to get you on the show for quite some time. So, Several years. So thanks for coming on the, uh, on the years. program. Now, I know you do more than just faces. So what are the different services you offer? Well, we offer practically everything in the way of plastic surgery. We do the facelifts, like what we're going to be talking about, but we also do noses, eyelids, um, necks, ears, uh, breasts, abdomen. We do liposuction, and we do a bunch of non-invasive things. Uh, we do What's this new, this, this freezing the fat? Cool oh, sculpting. Well, you say it works. That's cool sculpting. And it is one device that I've been very pleased with. And that's where we can give somebody the, the results of, of, of a liposuction, um, but without the cost of the anesthesia, the cost of the operating room, and then no downtime. And uh, this can also be life-changing for those people who want to lose that extra bulge or want that contouring. So the fat goes away, it's like fr the, the fat like the freezes fat, and dies? The fat freezes, eventually it dies, and then the body reshapes itself. So you also have lasers, things like that? We do. Uh, the lasers that we uh, have mainly are for um, hair removal, we'll do some tattoo removal. But the, the laser we have also will do some fine wrinkles, and that will be helpful for people who have the, the touch-ups that uh, they feel like they need. Um, with regards to the microneedling, now that's a wonderful technology. It's been around for a while, but now we've, uh, we're understanding it even more. And the microneedling is also something that will take away some of those fine wrinkles and improve the quality of the skin. And we will do what some people have called the vampire facelift, which I think is interesting. All right. But what it does is, what we do is we take the, the patient's own platelets uh, we draw their own blood, we spin it down, and then we put that back into their face because that has growth factors and other things that will stimulate healing and, and, and um, more collagen production. And so we can um, take away some of those fine wrinkles and, and make the skin nicer, smoother. And people need to know, I'm, I'm not endorsing you, I'm not trying to endorse you, but they're almost undetectable. We've talked on the phone, I said I could spot a good facelift. Well, that's why they come to us. Is they, the natural. They, they have the natural looking facelift. In fact, most of our patients have uh, friends and family who don't know that they've had the facelift. Really? Exactly. And they, they turn around and they, once they finally let it out, they thought that they were losing weight or, or eating something different, exercising more. Uh, in fact, a lot of them will take a you know, two, three, weeks off and then they come back into, uh, into their normal life and people wonder if they've lost weight or, or you know, changed their diet or something like that. And uh, they ask them what they've been doing because they look different. And they're also telling these people that they look better. They, they want to know what they're doing because they want to figure out if they can do something to make themselves look better too. Now we did our first show about 16 years ago and I've interviewed my, you know, a lot of plastic surgeons over the years, a lot of plastic surgeons, facial plastic surgeons. Mm -hmm. And I don't think what, you know, when I'm researching a story like this, that I don't think the public knows that there's really like, and, and I'm, and I'm going to be, uh, of course, correct me here where I'm wrong, but there seems to be a lot of skin lifts. And then there's the deeper lifts that, that are kind of repositioning tissues to where they used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you want to look for, right? right. Can well, you elaborate well, on that? So you're right. They, they are doing the, the, the skin lift, but they're also manipulating some of the underlying or deeper structures, but they're not going deeper like in this deep plane facelift. In this particular facelift, we are going deeper and farther. This is what does that mean, by the way, deeper and farther? Well, let me explain it this way. This is essentially a double facelift. We have the two main layers. We have the skin, but then we have the underlying st structures. We call that fascia. And it has some of the, the muscles that are involved in the face. But what we do is we raise the skin, but then we, lay, we raise the deeper layer. And then that deeper layer, we keep going and going and going until we reach what we call the release zone. Once we have that release zone, uh, we can actually pull that deeper layer up and so you, you're like repositioning repositioning up. the face. 
See, the idea is that we're trying to put the structures in the face back where they used to be. See, as we grow older, we lose the elastin in our skin. And, and then gravity takes hold of us and everything kind of drops. So if we can get in there, pull out that deeper layer, we can actually watch the whole face pull up. That's when we know that we've reached the release zone. So is that the only way, in your opinion, to get the natural results, is to do this deep plane on the right candidate? In my opinion, that's the best way to do it. Because this gives us predictable results with long-lasting results. The further we go back, the younger we go back, the longer the results are going to last. So we get down in there, we pull up, we release, we get into the release zone, we pull that up, we can see then how the face is gonna, gonna look. Like right then and there when they're at your Right there in the in your OR. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's kind of, a, kind of a wow moment. There it is, we know what's happening. So and then, it's not being done that way? There, Most are, of the there, are the few, there are a few people across the country that are doing the deep vein, plain facelift, but not very many. It, it takes longer, Andy. It okay. takes longer and... For the surgeon. For the, the surgeon. So it's more technically and, demanding? And it is a little more technically demanding. I mean, we've got facial structures in there that we have to be careful with. Okay. But when you know the anatomy um, and you understand where you are and you're working carefully, you can do this surgery safely. And it's undetectable and almost. Predictably, and predictably. When I see the pulled tight look, you're saying it probably wasn't a deep plain facelift. Most likely. Okay. Most likely. Let's take a look at some because, of your photos, by the way. Okay, well, what I'm gonna show you are some photos um, of, of some patients. Now these photos were done, uh, or a patient done by my father. Now, this is where my inspiration came from. Okay. And on this patient, you can see that she's got the typical um, characteristics of facial aging. She's got the sunken cheeks, the jowls, the excess uh, skin on the neck, giving her somewhat of a waddle or you know the, the turkey gobbler, as some people will call it. So when you get to, you know, the first one you saw was the front view. This one here is your, what we call the three quarter view. And this is uh, where you can start to see the jowls really show up. And the, the crease there between the lips and the cheek, we call that the nasal labial fold. That's what a lot of people really want to um, take out. They, they think they can do fillers or something there. But if you can reposition the cheek tissue back to where it used to be, that softens that nasal labial fold. And that satisfies the patient and makes them look a lot younger. Look at the side view here. On this side view, this is what people will see at a party or at other social events. And this is what the patient usually doesn't see in the mirror until yeah. they have like one of those three-sided mirrors or until they see themselves in a photograph. So when you look at that, you're thinking, I could take care of this. Oh yeah, we've done this before. We know that with this technique, we have predictable results. You've seen all these befores. Look at the after pictures. First off, when you look at her on the, wow. when you look at her on the front view, doesn't she look younger? And the other question yeah. is, does she look like the typical facelift, no. like the one that you that that you'll see in some of these national magazines or on you know some of these shows that will will highlight these things, does she look like a facelift? No. Okay, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a natural looking facelift. These people don't want to look like they've been operated on. They don't want other people to know. And what's interesting is most people do not have photographic memories. And so when they see these people after, they think that they've been doing something else, exercising, dieting, they've even changed their hair or something. They can't figure it out. That's when the patient has really won. So if you look at the three quarter view, now you're starting to look at how the jowl is up and, nice. and, and, the, and the crease, the nasal labial fold, you see how that crease is softened? That's what these people are looking so for. So the area, when you say nasal labial fold, we're That's talking about between this right the here. lip and the cheek. That's that one so major So that wasn't crease. just a bunch of fillers? No fillers. This so is, you're just all, kind this of is all repositioning the tissues to where they used to be. That's the key. That's 15 years younger, right? Is that fair to say? 15 or 20. You know? It could almost be like her daughter, Well, in a way. What's very interesting, and this is not uncommon, we've had some people who go out with their daughters and people think that they're sisters. 
We've even had some patients come back and say the biggest problem with this facelift is that the daughter's boyfriend is paying more attention to the mom now. Is that right? They've told you that before. Believe it or not. If you look at the side view, this is where you can really see the result, and that's in the neck. So Randy, when I was seeing these kinds of results, this is when I realized that I needed to go deeper and further in my facelift technique. And that's why I paid a lot of attention to my father. We've operated together quite a bit on this. So this next lady is, uh, is from Europe. And she looks pretty good. Yeah, but there were a few things that were, were bothering her. I mean, she's got the jowling and she's got the extra neck, neck skin. And she doesn't have that nice uh, angle of her neck. And you'll see that when we look at the, uh, the lateral view. But she has all of the, the signs of facial aging, the typical signs of facial aging. So when you look at the lateral or the side view, that's when you can really see the, the, yeah. the neck and you can see the jowls. And this is what she's wanting to eliminate. So now let's go to the, the after pictures. All right, so you can see that she's a oh, beautiful yeah. woman to begin with. But when you look at the after pictures, look how gorgeous she is now. What's interesting, she goes back to her home country in Europe, and her friends are wondering what in the world she's been doing. She comes back from America, and they wonder, why, why don't you ever age? <laughs> like vitamins or something. Something's going on. Anyway, so uh, she's a very wonderful lady. I've met her a few times. But, you know, it was after seeing these results. I mean, look at the, look at the lateral or the side view. Look at that neck. Look at that angle. I mean, there. it is very good. I mean, she looks so much younger. When it's all done, what's, what's neat to see is their change in their attitude. They feel younger. They look younger. They act younger. There's more vitality in their life. There's more vigor. And it shows. And what's interesting, the patient feels it, but often their family members, their co-workers, they notice it too. And again, they wonder what's going on. Most of these people don't tell them that they've had a facelift. This is their big secret. Now, going into this, you know, we talked in the green room. I, I feel like I could spot a facelift walking down the street, right? These look very natural. I think anybody would agree with that. Well, so that, this is the deep plane. That means it's, this is the deep. So this plane. could not have been accomplished. That means a natural look could have not been accomplished if you didn't go to the deeper structures and reposition everything, not just the skin. Correct. In this, with the deeper plane facelift, this is how we're getting these kinds of results. These results are so much better than the results I was getting when I was doing the standard facelift. You know, the skin lift with some manipulation of the deeper structures. Look at the three-quarter view. And in this particular view, you can really tell a lot. Okay, so she's lost the jowls, she's lost the neck skin, softened the nasolabial folds, but look at her eyes. Yeah. Do they look as tired as they used to? No. Does she look more awake, more alert? Does she not look more beautiful? Again, she was beautiful to begin it's with. It's true. She is she more attractive. She is looking more attractive. So seeing these pictures, meeting these people in the office when I first joined the practice, I realized that this is where I needed to go. Here's another example okay. of, a, of a male facelift because even though the majority of people who come in for the facelift are, are women, we are seeing more and more in the way of men. And why? Men also are recognizing that they're looking older, more tired, somewhat angry, um, and they want to look better. They want to look younger. They feel younger. They don't feel older. They want to look the way they feel. If you look at the, old, at the before pictures, you can see that he also is showing the typical signs of facial aging. Again, the excess uh, neck skin, the jowls, the dropped cheeks, that increased nasal labial fold, that crease between the lips and the cheek, he's got it all. So look at his after. You can see that it's the same gentleman. Yeah. But he's younger. He could pass as his younger brother. In fact... He looks a little hardened in the before. Well, that's what the facial this aging does. This him up a little bit. It does. And it's affected his eyes, everything. Even though it's subtle in the eyes, you can see that it's affected that. And so this, um, this is really been a life-changing uh, procedure for this gentleman also. And uh, he's very pleased with this result. And you say it's like, as if when they, when they look in the mirror and they like what they see, their charisma changes. 
They're better on job interviews, better at pr presentations. This, this I mean, is, you've seen that, correct. or they tell you that. Yes, this is true. I, you know, in talking with uh, these facelift patients, both my father's and my own patients, we have been finding a, a trend uh, with regards to jobs. If they're in an office where there are younger coworkers, they find out that the younger coworkers get a little more attention. Um, and they go through this facelift and they find out that they start getting more attention. Really? It, it, it's true. And it's, it's kind of an unfortunate thing in society, but it's, it's the truth. People who look younger and are more attractive tend to attract more attention. Why do you think advertisements are putting out... Um, but they always use attractive people. The, the beautiful woman, the handsome man. Why? It attracts people to that product. Well, he does look more handsome. I mean, when you look at this, nobody well, can argue handsome, that. handsome, but now with that photograph or with that after picture, he's much more handsome. So deep plane. This is that deep, this is the deep plane. repositioning tissues to Correct. where they used to be. Yes. So we could do the lesser facelifts. We could do the standard facelift that is like what, neck and jowls, like neck and jowls, and repositioning the, the just the deeper structures. We can, I can do that. I mean, that's what I was trained on. But I have found that with this particular technique, I am getting better results, more satisfaction, and my patients are letting me know this. They compare themselves to other friends or family members who've had facelifts. And they don't want to tell their friends or their family members that, you know, they didn't get the better face left. But, you know, they know that they've got this particular person has had the better face left. In your <clears> language, <throat> when you're talking to your colleagues, other plastic surgeons, you call this a deep plane facelift. So is that what you should ask if you're considering any facial surgery? Maybe you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. You ask the doctor, do you do a deep plane facelift? Do you do it routinely? Well, if, if these are the kind of results that you want, that's what you ask for. It's that simple. You want this kind of a result, you ask for a deep plane facelift. Okay, good. Good. Now, I know you brought more photos. We have time All for right. a few more. All right. So This now, is good. After being influenced by this yeah. and working with my father, again, learning from the best. I mean, right. that's, that's how in art to become a great artist, you study under the masters, right? That's how all great artists became great artists. Well, this is what I did. I studied, I studied under my master. And so I went out and was able to do my own faceless. And here's a woman here. And uh, she is a woman who uh, underwent some massive weight loss. And uh, eventually, after losing all of this weight, she has all these signs of facial aging again. The, the, the jowls, the dropped cheeks, the nasolabial folds, the extra uh, skin on the neck. And you can see where she is looking pretty old in there. So look at the neck. Look at the side view. You can see where she's got that extra skin and she doesn't have a well-defined angle. Look at the jowls here. Look at the, mm -hmm. the marionette lines. Look at her nasolabial folds. You can see where those are more prominent in this. And you can see it on the three-quarter view and the, the, the front view. But if you look at the after, you can see wow. where she has lost all of those signs of facial aging. The question is, does she look like she's had a facelift? No, no. So one of the things that we haven't talked about is some of the other stigmata of the stereotypical facelift. What about the sideburns? She still has her sideburns. Look at her earlobe. She doesn't have a tethered earlobe. She hasn't lost hair. These are some of the stigmata of the average facelift. Raised sideburns, tethered earlobe. So These uh, patients don't have that. How much, and that right, is how much science? Well, the science helps us to do the operation correctly because we study the anatomy, we understand the physiology, the technique, and everything that it takes to keep a patient safe during an operation. Mm -hmm. It is art. This is where we are able to take the structures back to where they used to be. Because as an artist, we know what the younger face looks like. Now, when you're on a console, like a woman like this, do you, do you in a way sometimes maybe even get excited and see it? Like you, you know where she's going to go? Like oh, yeah. you know the result? Yes, I can see the result. And 
the, for me, the key is helping the patient to see that during the consultation so that they get a good idea as to what they're going to look like when they're done. So now the other neat thing about this lady is that she was in a transition point in her life. And interestingly enough, she got married about the same time she got this facelift. That's the life-changing experience that you, can, you, that you can accomplish with this. So when people feel better about themselves, because we've talked a lot on the phone about this, it's like people start getting more engaged in life again. Like this is almost like a reinventing themselves kind of a thing. Well, Elaborate on that. They, they actually feel like they have a new lease on life. They feel younger, they look younger, they act younger, and they're more outgoing, and they start doing some of the things that they didn't feel like they could do before. Sometimes looking older holds them back from some of the things that they want to do in life. You, you know when you see these, like the Hair Club for Men commercials where they, they get their hair back and they're running and hiking and cycling and they're at the gym and they're dating and they're kissing? It's the same kind of thing when, when you take care of... You're right. Once people have a change in their life for the better, they act different. They act, they have more vitality in their life. They feel better about themselves. They're more, um, they're more interested in other things. And they will go out and be more active. Good, good. So you have more men, by the way? I do. So this is a gentleman that um, I took care of. He was also at a transition point in his life. Now this was a very active gentleman, a lot of hiking, etc. But he didn't feel that he looked like he felt. I don't have to go through all this. You can see the signs of facial aging. So look at his befores and his afters. You can <laughs> see that he looks like himself, but a much younger version. That's like a 20, 15 year, good 15 oh, absolutely. It's like you cleaned him absolutely. up a little bit, right? And he comes back in the office after telling me how much this has done for his life. This is life-changing surgery. And I, I've seen this time and time so again. So the deeper plane, for people just tuning in, we're talking about there's, there, there seems to be a few different types of lifts where they just address the jowls and the neck. But you say at your center, Fairbanks, that you're going a little bit deeper and repositioning tissues to where they used to be. And this so-called deep plane facelift, that most guys don't do it this way. Is that fair to say? That's correct. Okay. That's and that's why you get the better results. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, that's but it's that technique that's doing this. Correct. Okay. This is not this is not a lunchtime lift. This is not a one and a half hour lift. This takes time. But like everything else in life, some of the most quality things in life take a little time and a little more effort. So here's a lady that uh, I assisted with my father. Again, you can see all of the, the typical signs of facial aging. And look at the side view. Look at the neck. Mm -hmm. You can tell that this is an older woman. Yeah, and, and then when you look at the afters, you can see the difference. You can see a brightness in her face. And this is not, you know, any alteration of the pho photograph. It's very nice. This is the way she really looks. This is where the artistry comes in. We know where the face needs to be. We know where it came from. We've learned the direction of pull, where you, the direction that you pull the skin up and back. We've learned how to put it in the natural position. And but every surgeon must know this, okay? Logically, what you're telling me, so why aren't they all doing it this way? I don't know. I really don't know. What's the right? Well, you must have, have an well, idea. Well, is it tougher to do it this way? Well, for, for the uh, for the surgeon, it, it takes a long it takes longer, okay. and it's a little more meticulous with regards to the dissection. All right, you know the operation does take longer, and but it's the only way to get results. People like will this. ask us. Well, they'll they'll at meetings. Other physicians will come up and ask us, "How do you do this?" You know, they've listened to the lecture, then they ask us, "How do you do this?" And we explain it. Then the key question is, "How long does it take you?" Once we tell them, they say, oh, well, that's why. And, you know, I can't take but that But it's long. somebody's face, by the way. They're going to be looking at it for another 40 years. You might as well do it right. That's okay. Because as far as a the patient, they wake up it's like time flew by. Yeah. There was no time at all. Yeah. Interesting. And, you know, the downtime isn't much different than any other facelift. Healing time, whether you make a little incision or a big incision, the healing time actually takes so, about the same time. Uh, well, let me ask you this as far as how long it'll last. So if you take a, a couple of twin sisters... 50. You do one of these deeper plane repositioning tissues to where they used to be. And then you see them, you know, once had the procedure, one hasn't. You take them 15 years later. 
will the one that's had it done still look noticeably younger? Yes, yes. It's, it's that simple. Yes, they do. Because we will continue to age, even after this facelift, we will continue to age. But you've just set the clock back. We are short of time, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about the keys to a natural looking facelift, the modern facelift. And, and uh, Dr. Fairbanks, I mean, you do lasers, you do fillers, you add volume with fat. We should mention that you do all those things. It's just today I wanted you to talk about the facelift. Right. And that's what we're talking about. We have time for one more. This is another gentleman here that I, uh, I assisted with my father. So we did this one together. And this gentleman is an actor. And what's interesting is he's now able to play the younger role. Look at how he looks tired and older. Look at the neck. Mm -hmm. Now look at the, look at the after view. Look at that neck. I mean, this gentleman could pass as his younger brother. So he all tells, of those wrinkles right here, you didn't do fillers or you did do fillers? No, no fillers. So this is a... just the operation, just the facelift. The eyes, the nasal labial folds, the neck, everything. Friends, family, they come back and they ask them, what have you changed? Are you exercising more? Are you eating something different? Who is the perfect patient? Like who you'd like to attract? The patient who wants a change in their look. The patient who wants to look younger. They don't want to look tired. They don't want to look worn out. They don't want to look older. So what is the age range? Well, we get them from, uh, from 40s up into the 70s. I've even seen a couple down into the 30s. But the average are in their 50s or 60s. But these are people who have decided that they just want to look like their younger selves. They've made that decision. And they're willing to do what it takes to achieve the results that you're seeing here. So you don't think they, I mean, most of your patients, you say they don't want to look different. They just want to look great for their age or a little bit younger. They don't want to look different in that they don't want to look like a different person. They want to look like themselves, just younger. So you don't have to look done. No, you don't so, want to look done. You, so don't want, you don't want to look like you've been operated on. They want to look younger. They want to look rejuvenated. On the consult. How soon before, in your mind, you go, boy, this is going to be good? Almost as soon as I see them. It's, 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 it's not very hard. Of course, uh, you want to talk with them and you yeah. want to point out all the things uh, that we could do for them. And as we do that, I go through the consultation and I recognize exactly what I need to do. But as soon as I see the patient and they tell me that they want a facelift, I can tell whether or not they're gonna have a good result. I'm not trying to cut you short, but I wanna thank you for coming on the show. We are out of time. And, and I should mention, what, uh, uh, one of my, uh, the guys that have been on the show, plastic surgeon, said you've gotta interview this Dr. Fairbank. So thanks again for coming well, on the show. I appreciate good the recommendation. Stuff. Great work, by thank the way. Thank you, Randy. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.